Hi, we're going to go through the Fire Dynamics Simulator, the installation, and then showing you some basic uh, running of a case. So let's go to um, just Google it FDS installation. This first link here gives us here, and we go the Mac OS X. And my downloads here it now has, oops, keep. We can see FDS 6.7, so we're just going to run this as root. Before I did this, I actually installed um, xquartz, um, xquartz.org. You'll need that to visualize the simulation output, so you can just install this DMG. I think I restarted my machine after that as well. So then we'll do. Um, We'll run this as root, so sudo bash fds, and then okay. So enter to ins do the installation. Then we'll tell it where we want to put it. So I'm going to put it in code. Whoops, users dll for codes FDS. Okay, and I'll take just a second to copy that over. Great, and then I like to keep this output for reference. I'm just going to copy that. And then um, Codes FDS. This is where we put it. Let's go up. Let's change the permissions. We su we did it as sudo, so we'll go sudo chown r. Uh, make me the owner and this FDS folder. Great. And then we'll go into FDS. So this is what it gives you with the install. Um, I'm going to go read me uh, dol my initials just paste that output of the installation there. So we're going to want to put these two lines in our bash rc file. I did that, so that's done. And then either restart your terminal or source your bash rc file. And then um, if we do like which fds, you can see it put it in this bin folder here so it can find everything. And then, um, then let's go and run a sample case. So um, I put a sample on my desktop in a folder called fa Fire. Let's see, CD FDS Fire Slope. And then this folder has three files in it. The only one you really need to run an FDS simulation is this input file, fireslope.fds. I'll talk about those others in a second. So let's look at this fireslope.fds. I won't go through all the details. You basically edit a text file however you want. FDS comes with tons of example cases that you can see how these work, and then their documentation is pretty good. So you can go through and look at how these work and set up your case. Um, in particular, I give it a, the case and name here. That'll be what my files get named uh, with this uh, prefix and then give it a title so this particular case we have a rectangular 3d domain and I'm I have wind blowing in from the left two meters per second and then I just have in uh, interior of the domain I have a an, uh, basically a heptane pool fire so a four by four meters square that emits heptane and it's burning and so it blows it to the right and then I actually took this domain and rotated it. So this is on a slope where I implemented the slope by changing the gravity vector. So here you can see GVEC has got th these components in the X and Z direction to simulate uh, flame on a slope. Um, I'm going to run this in parallel on my machine. So four processors. Um, and those will be split up into along the x-axis. So I lower is 0, I upper is 3, and then in J and K, 
we only have um, one. So three proce four processors in X, one in Y, and one in Z. And then 20 grid cells in X, 24 in Y, 60 in Z. And this 20 is per processor here. So these, these will generally be um, per processor as I've set it up. And the domain is 10 meters in X, 24 in Y, 30 in Z. And again, those are for per processor. So it'll really be a 40 domain in the downstream X direction. Um, and then I've got boundaries specified for the uh, lower and upper in X, lower and upper in Y, and then the upper in Z. And then the bottom uh, ground basically is set using these commands. In addition, um, I'm setting up two different planes for output and these planes are going to include the following quantities and I have two of them. So one of them is going to be basically through the center of the domain, a side profile, and the other one will be cutting through the flow direction. Okay, so there's basics of this setup. So then um, I'm setting this up to use an initial velocity field. That's also going to allow me to have the velocity constant on the domain entrance inlet. And to do that, I wrote a little script, make initial velocity field dot pi, and it's going to query my input file looking for the appropriate spots, and then it's going to output the velo a, a uniform velocity field. So this is kind of what it looks like. You can look into it a little bit more if you want. Pause the video. U is specified to be two and a half meters per second. And then I, I have a little script here that will output the date, run that velocity field, and then execute the code. So to execute the code, I'm using MPI exec, four processors, the FDS executable, and then the input file. And that's it. And then finishing up with the date again. So let's just run the Python on the make initial velocity field. And you can see it creates four files, one for each processor. And those are just, um, there's going to be, the, for every grid point in the domain, so there's 21 by 25 by 61 grid points. And that gives 32025 velocities. And they're all just the same with the, the x component listed here, 2.500. Okay, so if you had a thousand processors, you'd get a thousand of these files. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And you can see what it does. So it is starting up FDS, reading the input file. While that's running, we'll just look at the installation instructions. It kind of takes you through what the um, what to do on the various operating systems so on a Mac here that sudo bash command is listed just following along in a standard way um, yeah there's documentation on um, their github page let's go back here so you can see uh, manuals etc validation guides verification guides um, okay, and then I'll just let that go. So it's it's chunking through. It's going to go up to eight seconds was the runtime. So I'll just um, pause the video, or I'll just skip ahead for you, and you can come back when it's done. Okay, and it is completed. So now we can see there's a whole bunch of new files in here. These are going to be basically run output files and visualization files. And um, you can go through those in general, but let's go ahead and just visualize the um, results. We'll do that with smoke view, which was installed previously when we did the installation of FDS. And then give it the name fire slope FDS. Okay, and then we get this FDS window or this smoke view window here. And so the dialogs basically will just right click here and we can do load. Let's have a look at one of these slices that we put in here. And we have maybe the temperature slice. 
of these two regions. There's that one, and then we'll put in the other slice in temperature, the Y. Good. And then it's playing through the video. You can click and drag to rotate this around, and it automatically figures out my gravity vector so you can see the degree of slope that I put on it. And uh, visualize the domain. Works pretty good. You can stop this if you want, drag it around, and uh, there you go. Okay, so um, just another illustration. Let's go ahead and look at um, the 3D smoke. Soot density. Okay. And you can look at, um, well, let's turn off these slices. Unload all. So we're just seeing the smoke volume rendering here. And then maybe also show this um, HRRPU, heat release rate per unit volume. Okay, and you kind of can see the flame structure a little bit better. Obviously, if you increase the resolution and run it for longer than three minutes or whatever it was, um, you'll get higher resolutions uh, or higher, more structures visible. Okay, so that's a real brief introduction um, to using these. Now, F, uh, this smoke view has a number of tools available for processing the data, and you can kind of go through those and play around with the different dialogues. Um, let's go in and look at another tool that's available, though. So I'm going to do, um, let's just go back up to the desktop here, and under this FDS, I'm just going to grab this data. You can either do that by downloading the zip or cloning the repository. I'll just clone it, get clone. This utilities folder here has a utility uh, that I put together in the Python scripts. Um, this get ver slice and plot slice, and then these also use the previously existing slread.py. So once we have this, this will be convenient for accessing some of the data. Okay, great. So we'll go in here to FDS, utilities, Python, scripts. We'll just copy those over. So SL read, um, plot slice, and get ver slice. We'll just copy those back up to this um, fire slope case. DS fire slope case. Okay, so we put those Python files in here, and we'll just run this plot slice notebook. We can see what that looks like. Whoops. Jupe. Okay, great. And um, so this code is going to, let's make this just a, maybe we can make this a little bit smaller so we can see a little bit better. So this um, code will, you can set the case name. So I called this, um, what did I call it? FDS fire slope, I think double check that yeah fire slope FDS fire slope FDS actually the input file is just fire slope dot FDS okay and then we have the um, temperature here that we can use um, if we go in and look at the um, fire slope dot FDS Sorry, that got small. Let's try to make that a little bit more readable. So what we're going to do is specify one of the planes. So we, we s selected a plane right here and another plane right here. So let's select plane number one. 
and then the variable that we want so there's temperature or we can choose any of those G skip will let us skip grid points suppose we only want every other point in the directions and you can also skip the times that are output and that's basically it and then we can just run this cell um, and it'll output for us it'll grab a 2d array basically of one of these um, uh, uh, for every time that was output during the simulation so this is really convenient if you want to process the data if you want to compute a mean profile here we've got um, the variable is um, uh, noted and then v average here is just zeros nx by ny we just loop over all the times compute the average field time average flow field and we're just plotting these together so makes it nice if you want to compute like a line average or if you want to just have a lot more control uh, over the data that you have in a given plane that can be a useful uh, little tool okay so this has been a demo of downloading running and a little bit of processing of um, the FDS Fire Dynamics Simulator.